Hello and welcome to page two. Um, we're going to do some nomenclature problems here. We're going to start with one for hexadiene and this has six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we see that we have this 4E designation that's going to tell us whether um, the group should be on the same side or the opposite side, uh, but we don't really know what that's going to look like yet since we have all of these different um, substituents to add. And by all of them, I mean two. Hmm. So we're going to put a methyl group on two, methyl group on four, double bond on one, and a double bond that starts on the four. So as is, we're just going to make sure that this double bond is already of an E configuration. And so that just means for a simple alkene like this, we're looking to have uh, the high priority substituents on the same side opposite sides. <laughs> These two groups are on opposite sides of the double bond plane. So we look at this carbon here. We see that this carbon is connected to other carbons, whereas this carbon is just uh, connected to hydrogens. So this here is going to be the high priority. And here it's just a simple hydrogen versus carbon. So carbon is definitely going to win. And we see that this has a high priority. We look on either side there, we see that the high priorities are on opposite sides, so it is indeed E. Let's then move on to trans 5 terbutyl 2 methyl 3 octane. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little more stuff going on here, so I think it works out better if we number our carbons. Um, we have three octane is where we should be starting. One, two, three, so I'm going to put the double bond right there. We have a methyl group on two and a terp-butyl group on five. One, two, three, four, there are five. Um, so the other thing that we want to make sure is happening is that the double bond is trans and we have the hydrogens on opposite sides, which means that the uh, other alkyl groups are on opposite sides. So yes, it is already trans. All right, so we're gonna do more cis-trans easy stuff. Um, double bond number three highlighted here. Uh, this is gonna require some more prioritization than what we've done in the past. So on the first side for carbon three, we compare, these are both CH2 groups, so it's a tie. We go out one more carbon evenly. We see that this carbon is attached to two oxygens and a hydrogen. This carbon here is attached to two oxygens and a carbon. So this side wins. We're going to make this uh, the higher priority. And then over here, carbon versus carbon, seemingly a tie, but really this guy is connected to a carbon and two hydrogens. This guy here is connected to a carbon, a carbon and a hydrogen, because that's how we treat those double bonds. So here we can see because of that, I just erased. This is high priority. If you look on the, um, across the plane of the double bond there, you see they're on the same Z, and so this is a Z alkene. Next one, we look at carbon five, uh, the double bond there, and we see that it is non-isomerizable, meaning you're not gonna be able to define a cis and trans because one side has two of the same group. Um, so this is, and I for non-isomerizable. There are no isomers for that alkene is what non-isomerizable means. All right, so this guy here, we have CH2 versus CH2 as a tie. This is where things get different. Uh, the top one here is attached to a bromine versus an iodine. An iodine has a higher atomic number, so this is gonna have a higher priority. Then a little bit shorter of a race, we have oxygen versus carbon. Oxygen wins. It's the higher priority. Do, 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 do. They're on opposite sides now. We designate this as an E alkene. And then we go to isodemoic acid, and we see that double bond number four already has these two groups on opposite sides, so this is a little easier to see. Perhaps that this is a trans alkene. These two groups are on the opposite side. If you had said this was an E alkene, that's just as good. Then we have... Over here, let's see, this double bond number six. Uh, double bond number six has uh, three substituents, so the easy system is going to be more appropriate than cis and trans. Uh, we look here on carbon six, and we see that one carbon and three hydrogens are there. Over here, we have two carbons and a hydrogen, so this side wins. High priority. 
Now we're going to compare what's happening on the other carbon here. We have, or we're looking at a carbon that is attached to another carbon in a hydrogen, whereas this carbon is just attached to, oh, not just, this carbon is attached to a nitrogen and two hydrogens. So even though this is only one nitrogen versus two carbons, it doesn't work like that. The system goes with the higher atomic number. So we can see that this is going to be the higher priority substituent. And you can see once again that those two are on the same side of the alkene. This is a Z alkene. Now we want to get to the relationship between uh, the compounds that we see here. We are looking at uh, two different bromine containing compounds. So one quick thing to note, um, this bromine is on an atom that has three carbons, or in other words, is a tertiary bromide, whereas this one is secondary. So we know that they can't be stereoisomers. They could maybe be constitutional isomers, but that's only if they have the same molecular formula. So we're gonna count that real quick. One, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons, great. And they both have zero degrees of unsaturation. So if they have the same number of carbons and each have one bromine, then they're gonna have the same number of hydrogens. I'm not saying you shouldn't count the number of hydrogens, I'm just saying it's not necessary. Uh, for this one, we have three, six, nine, 10, 11. We should have 11 hydrogens in this compound as well. Three, six, nine, uh, 10, and 11. Now these two compounds on the row, oh, sorry, <laughs> these are constitutional isomers because they have the same molecular formula but a different connectivity. Over here, uh, it looks, these compounds look a little bit more alike. We have a benzene ring on both and the carbon that's attached directly to the benzene ring has an ethyl and a chlorine group. So they are not constitutional isomers, they at least are going to be some kind of stereoisomer or they might just be the same compound. And the best way to determine that is by assigning R and S configuration. Here, we're looking at chlorine as priority one. This ring is gonna be priority two because it's a carbon attached to three carbons. And then this ethyl group is gonna be priority three. We're looking at it in the correct way because the hydrogen is facing back. So if we count the circle, it goes counterclockwise. This is an S center. On the other one, same prioritization rules. So we can just add those in, one for chlorine, two for the benzene ring, three for the ethyl group. We're counting around clockwise now. This is an R stereo center. So these are non-superimposable mirror images, also known as enantiomers. Okay, then we look at this ring uh, containing alcohol and the uh, a uh, hexane containing an alcohol. Uh, both of these have six carbons and one oxygen. They both have one degree of unsaturation, so they should have the same number of hydrogens. You're welcome to check that if you like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So one degree of unsaturation. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So always good to double check. Uh, but these two, different, definitely different connectivity. They are constitutional isomers. All right. Finally, we have these disulfide compounds that are probably pretty stinky, but they got, uh, these guys have the same molecular formula, the same connectivity. And at first glance, they may look like enantiomers, but the problem here is that they're not actually chiral compounds. They have, uh, they each have a plane of symmetry. So these are meso compounds. So <clears throat> just saying that they're meso compounds is, is, is definitely important, but really that means that they are the same. Uh, and the way that you can check that is by assigning RS configuration and seeing that there actually is uh, symmetry in these molecules. So we have, this is an R center, this is an S center, uh, one, two, three, this is an S center, that's an R center. Because there's symmetry in the molecule, you can number them either way, end up with the same thing. So once again, those are the same compound. Thank you for listening, see you on page three.